So our opening hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy. And you, you know this one. Okay, shall we? Brothers and sisters, we've entered into this place. Let us greet our Lord and spend this time in love and fellowship and begin as we begin all things. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, it's so vitally important that we call upon our sins, bring them to the forefront of our thinking, prepare to lay them at the feet of our, of our Heavenly Father, who wants so badly for us to be with Him in eternity. Let's reflect upon our sins. And we pray together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. By the power handed down through the apostles and in full confidence of our Father's love for us, let us receive our absolution. You are absolved of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father and Protector, without you nothing is holy, nothing has value, 
guide us to everlasting life by helping us to use wisely the blessings you have given to the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with, the, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we turn our attention to the Liturgy of the Word. Our first reading comes to us from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. Your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are the master of might, you judge with clemency and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your sons good ground for hope that you would permit, permentance, permit repentance for your sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Yes, O Lord, you are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer <clears throat> and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Our second reading comes to us from Paul's letter to the Romans. The Spirit, too, helps us in our weakness, when we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be expressed in speech. He who searches hearts knows what the Spirit means, for the Spirit intercedes for the saints as God himself wills. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed to the crowd another parable. The reign of God may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds throughout his wheat and then made off. When the crop began to mature and yield grain, the weeds made their appearance as well. The owner slaves came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where are the weeds coming from? He answered, I see an enemy's hand in this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go out and pull them up? No, he replied. Pull up the weeds, and you might take the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. 
Then at harvest time, I will order the harvesters. First, collect the weeds and bundle them up to burn, and then gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed to another parable. The reign of God is like a mustard seed which someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest seed of all. Yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes so big a shrub that the birds of the sky come and build their nests in its branches. He offered them still another image. The reign of God is like yeast, which a woman took and kneaded into three measures of flour. Eventually, the whole mass of dough began to rise. All these lessons Jesus taught the crowds in the form of parables. He spoke to them in parables only to fulfill what had been said through the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden since the dawn of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went home. His disciples came, came to him with the request. Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in answer, The farmer sowing the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed the citizens of the kingdom. The weeds are the followers of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. Harvest is the end of the world, while the harvesters are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will dispatch his angels to collect from his kingdom all who draw others to sin and all evildoers. The angels will hurl them into fiery furnace, where they will wail and grind their teeth. Then the saints will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Let everyone heed what he hears. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning once again. Everybody doing okay? Just going to make sure no one has any new comments. Okay. And good morning. I do have some notes here. First of all, let's do this. You are so loved. I think that's the most important message of the gospel. And I think I say it quite a bit. And I think it needs to be said quite a bit. And we should say it to one another quite a bit. We should hear it quite a bit. You are endlessly loved. Deeply loved. The most important... What would you call it? Element? Force. The most important force in God's universe. The most important force. I, I'm, I'm unshakable in my faith on this. And I think you are too. I think you understand this and know this. The most unshakable force in God's creation is love. I got a lot of books behind me. Some of them are Bibles. Let me see. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. Some of them are about philosophy. Some of them are about faith. Some of them are about uh, theology. Some of them are about therapy because I'm a therapist. Although if you look carefully, this is Winnie the Pooh, but all right, okay. Well, that's about love too. And they're all really ultimately about love. Books and books are very complicated language. Lots of big thinkers and philosophers and theorists of all stripes, secular and religious. And they all say the same thing. When you really get down to it, when you really get down to it, we know the answer. It's love. And I want that at this time, here we are together, you and I, and you know, we'll return to our churches at some point. I hope we do although I very much enjoy this with you, but we'll all return to our, our brick and mortar churches and our communities, to our people, our neighborhoods, when this is all over. But the love doesn't change. No matter how you feel about the issues of the day, the love doesn't change. It's important as we gather here together at this moment to sit here and mindfully Receive that love. 
right now, right this very moment, you receive the love of God. You have it anyway. It's already been given. It's been given endlessly. Over and over and over. You know what's funny? I was, well, you know, many funny things. You know, a priest, a therapist, and a songwriter walk into a bar. You know, and that's a good one. But here's the funny thing I was thinking about. Um, okay. um, as I was typing my notes for today, I was writing, You Are Loved. You are loved. You are loved. And I accidentally type because I have bad typing. It says, you are re-loved. And I looked at that and going like, well, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of a reminder to me with my sloppy fingers about love, 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 love. I'm saying it a lot because it's so important. But there's a responsibility that comes with this seed that has been planted within us, the seed of love. The responsibility is that it grow and that it be watered and nurtured. That can be done lots and lots of ways, but the most important way that it's done is that we in turn love. There was that word again. And of course, those are the two greatest commandments. That seed that has been given us, that seed of faith. Faith in what? Faith in what? Love. Faith in God. Where in John's letter we read that God is love. In the beginning was the Word. This love has been here forever. The most powerful force in our lives. Receive it. Take it. It belongs to you. It's been given. And you are to water it and nurture it and share it on. What a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah, what a wonderful thing. This is why I keep returning to the gospel. In my life, I've had my ups and downs and my doubts and my moments. And for a long time, I was just too cool for church. And whatever, whatever, whatever. I was too smart or whatever. But when I, and I'm sure this is true on your journey as well, no matter where you've been and, 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 and what you've gone through, what we return to is the reality of love. The reality of it. The ever presence of it. The, the force of it. The responsibilities of it. How do we know that we are loved? I see proof all around me. How do you know that you are loved? Thinking about it? Good. Yeah. Because something happened in your life that really showed you undeniably that you were loved. Something happened. Probably a few things. Many things have happened to me that showed me undeniably that I am loved. Over and over and over. Over and over. My very first memory, I'll share it with you. My very first thing that I can remember. Of course, I was very little. And the very first thing I remember is that my mother was holding me. I had woken up. I Maybe I got scared or something. Just a little boy, right? I don't know. How old was I? Maybe three. I don't know how far back a person can remember. And I was upset. So I started, Mama, Mama. I don't know. And my mom came and got me. And she picked me up. And she walked me around the room. And she said, Look, everything's okay. Look, everything's, there's the couch. Everything's where it always is. There's the TV. You know, there's everything. You're fine. Everything's right where it always was. Talking to me gently and holding me. Love. What a nice first memory to have. Did you have a memory like that? When was the time when you just knew that you were loved? Maybe it was with a parent. Maybe it was with your partner. Maybe it was just the other day. Maybe it was this morning. Receive that love. Receive that love right now. This is the kingdom of God. This is the, the, the bottom line of the Bible. God loves you so much that there is a plan made for us to be with God. We can't do it on our own. And, and, and now people start questioning the plan because 
God wants us to be with him, but we can't be with him if we're sinning. But, so why wouldn't you ask, well, then why did God let us sin? This is God, after all. Because you can't have love without free will. You can't do it. That's not love. Love needs to be chosen and given. It needs to be mindful. How many times have we said, love you, and we didn't even think about it on our way out the door? Let's think about it. Keep using the words, but let's just think about it more. Love you. Boy, I love you. On my way out the door, I love you. And I'm so glad you're going to be here when I get back. Put that love into mindfulness. But free will is the thing that really makes love special. Think about the story of Adam in the Garden of Eden. They had everything they needed. Everything they needed. You know the story. I don't have to make this a long, drawn-out thing. And they were given a choice. You can have anything you want. Look, anything. It's all yours, yours. Oh, not that, okay? Not that. Okay, well, what do you know? They chose the thing. But it was free will. I had to choose obedience. So we have to do that too. How does God want us to obey? By loving one another. This is hard to do lately. There's a lot of stress in our world right now. I'm very stressed. I bet you are too. Maybe you aren't. Maybe you're doing pretty well. I hope you are. But receive, really, I just wanted to make sure that you knew you knew, and I bet you didn't know, that love is the answer in all of this, this great big book of the gospel. The primary force behind this is the love of God. And it's yours. You have it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's warm in here when we close the door. I could turn on the air conditioner, but it makes an awful racket. Doreen is over there going like this. She's going. <laughs> it's really something. Anyway, so let us say together our profession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we are so bold as to approach our Lord and lay our petitions before him. So brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his people. So we pray for, we pray for Samantha Schwartz Phillips, Lisa Segrist Fuhr, Katerina Richardson Bush, and as always we pray for all our frontline healthcare workers, social workers, mental health workers, first responders, and all who have pledged to serve their community, particularly in this time of, of crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Adam Sweeney. He's the nephew of one of our priests, Father Harry Hardigan. Adam was in a terrible ATV accident, was seriously injured. He's currently recovering, but it's a rough road ahead for him in his recovery. 
He is a law enforcement officer and he is the father of two children. Uh, so we pray for, uh, for, for peace and healing for Adam. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation as we continue to wrestle with the original sin of racism. I pray in particular for myself and for all of my white brothers and sisters that we may listen to those of color speak of their lived experience without defensiveness as we continue to pray for healing for our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Bill Miller, Kathy and Alex's dad, Alex's dad, Kathy's father-in-law, who broke his hip a while ago. Kathy shares that he's recovering physically okay, but is still wrestling with some confusion. So for Bill and Alex and all of the Millers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Um, we're going to continue to pray for Mark Kelly. Last update that he was having had a uh, pacemaker replaced. Had a faulty pacemaker. He's a friend of ours from, from a long time ago. He's, we don't know. I met Mark many years ago, but uh, we really knew his daughter, Colleen Kelly, back in Grand Rapids. A friend of Doreen and I and uh, Kathy Miller. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the continued health for Mary Ann and Ken Kelly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the elderly. We pray for those with underlying medical conditions. We pray for the lonely and the anxious and the depressed and the frightened and all who are emotionally overwhelmed. We pray for patience and wisdom as we welcome, as we wrestle with social restrictions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are living paycheck to paycheck, who will be asked to stay home. We pray for those who don't have the option of staying home. We pray for the most vulnerable and those living on the fringes of our economic system. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have perished due to COVID-19, for their friends and family, for all who love and miss them, and for their eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the full recovery of all those who are infected, uh, along with the mother of our friend uh, Beth and Eggleston Greisinga. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the health of Dave Kranzberger, who is rather low on the list, awaiting a much-needed lung transplant. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the continued health for Mary Beth Whalen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless you. Uh, we pray for the leaders of our communities and countries to lead wisely during this troubling time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of God gathered here in this time of turmoil, that we may, may bear witness to the love of Christ and reflect Christ in our lives, that we may show fearless and selfless love to one another as our world heals. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. One moment, please. Oh, right. And of course, thank you, uh, Tim. Doreen is reminding me that we're going to pray for your dad. So we pray for the father of Tim Langlow. Thank you. Uh, he's going back to see if his cancer treatment has worked. It could be he could get some very exciting news that he is now cancer free. So we pray for this positive result. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. And peace and blessings to you, Tim Langlow. You're one of the finest men I've met. And I pray for peace for you and your family. Uh, and we pray for you. We pray for the things that are troubling you the most. Pray for those concerns that are placed upon you. We pray for the concerns that perhaps are known only to God. Let's lay them at the feet of our merciful Creator. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in your spirit. Send your spirit again into our hearts, into our lives, and into our world. Hear our prayers and save us in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you, but not upon our sins, but the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's love and peace. So, peace be with you. I gotta go over here and share the sign of peace with the with the with the nice church lady. Peace be with you. Now we turn once again our attention to the liturgy of the Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask that you receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at these hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do always we do we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. All things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your laws. But you chose to create man in your own image, setting him over the whole world in all its wonder. You made man the steward of creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
We praise you, Lord, with all the angels in their song of glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask that you make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by his body and blood, may be filled with this Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Anne, St. Joseph, St. Benedict, St. James, St. Lawrence, St. Carlos of Brazil, St. Teresa of Calcutta, and all the Apostle Saints and Martyrs on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may the sacrifice which has made our peace with you have as the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Anthony, our bishop, Michael, our bishop, and all the bishops and clergy and the leaders of all faiths and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family who have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship, for whom we now pray. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory, through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 
Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom, as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. And in your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all undue anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be eternal life to all who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father, and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you. My brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but always say the word, and I shall be healed. So again, we seek communion, we seek fellowship, we seek connection and unity as one body of Christ. We can't be in the same room but we know with our God all things are possible. So I receive this Eucharist on your behalf, and in doing so, let us all come into communion with our precious Savior in the body of Christ. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we have a communion song. And I know you all know it. It's one of the best songs ever written. And it's lasted for a long, long time. Amazing Grace. Right?
hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come Twas grace that brought Let us pray. Lord, if we receive the sacrament which celebrates the memory of the death and the resurrection of Christ your Son, may this gift bring us closer to eternal salvation. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you and keep you from harm and bless you with every good gift. Amen. May he just set his word in your heart and fill you with lasting joy. Amen. May you walk in his ways always knowing what is right and good until you enter your heavenly inheritance. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a closing hymn. Oh, the classics. You know, the classics really just keep giving and giving. Our closing hymn is, They'll Know We Are Christians by what, people? By what? By our love. You knew it. Okay. Anyways, what a treat to be with you today. Um, okay. I'm not going to comment on an unfortunate comment. I'm not going to do it. You all are big kids. You'll have your own thoughts on it. Uh, but um, it's unfortunate. So we live in love. And we live in peace. I like the good E minor hymn. Because you do that. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all humanity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Walk with each other, we will walk. Christians by our love We will work with each 
So peace to all. Yeah, Tim is pretty human, dude. Peace to you all. I'm so glad you were here with me again today. We'll return to our churches someday, but until then, I hope this is helpful to you. It sure is helpful to me. Peace to all. I'll see you next Sunday. And uh, have a lovely, lovely, lovely day, as I plan to as well. Bye-bye. What?